Japan's defense minister is visiting the United States this week, and this comes as Japan's prime minister, Shinzo Abe, is seeking to change their constitution to give their military a more assertive role. CCTV's Jim Spellman joins us live with more. Yeah, hey, Susan. This change in Japan's constitution comes as tension between China and Japan is on the rise, and the United States is searching for new ways to exert its influence in the region. So do all. Last week's announcement by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to reinterpret Japan's constitution to allow a more assertive national defense has been met with mixed reaction around the world. In Japan, the decision to allow greater use of its military force to defend other countries has largely been viewed unfavorably. I don't want our soldiers to go to war abroad and kill people. In the Republic of Korea and in China, concerns that the move would create instability in the region. We urge Japan to adhere to the road of peaceful development and handle related issues cautiously. Japan should respect its Asian neighbors' reasonable security concerns. But Australia, the Philippines and the United States have welcomed the policy. There's no reason uh, from our perspective to, to, to believe or to worry that it would that it'll make tensions worse. And quite, quite the contrary, we think it will help with security and stability uh, in the region. This week, Japanese Defense Minister Itsunori Onodera will travel to Washington to meet with U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel to further explain the change and what it means for U.S.-Japan relations. Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution reads in part, the Japanese people forever renounce war as a sovereign right of the nation and the threat or use of force as a means of settling international disputes, and goes on to say, land, sea, and air forces, as well as other war potential, will never be maintained. As part of its surrender in World War II, Japan gave responsibility for its national defense to the United States. But over the years, Article 9 has been reinterpreted many times to allow a robust military of about 250,000 troops to be built, but for self-defense only. This week's changes allow Japan to assist allies who may be under attack, even if Japan itself is not. The move would potentially allow Japan to form military alliances with its neighbors as a way to push back against the rising influence of China. Talks this week at the Pentagon will focus on creating a new arrangement between the U.S. and Japan regarding military cooperation going forward. Officials hope to have a new agreement in place by the end of the year, Susan. Well, Jim, how far does the new policy go? For instance, can we expect to see Japanese troops serving alongside U.S. troops in places like Iraq? Uh, frankly, no. Prime Minister Abe made it clear that that is not his intention to have that happen. But that's certainly one of the fears amongst many in Japan who worry this policy, combined with the often interventionist foreign policy of the U.S., could draw their country into conflicts around the world. I think that certainly shows that the Japan-U.S. relationship is complicated and full of potential pitfalls for both countries going forward, Susan. Jim Spellman reporting live. Thank you for that.